Interior Ministry, the rumors about piercing ID cards or voting via the Internet or even cutting roads between the cities and countrysides are groundless. Delegation of Syrian community, we have challenged the decisions of the French and Belgian governments and have come to our motherland to participate in the presidential elections. Russia underlines that it is not permitted to politicize the humanitarian issue in Syria and to use it to demand foreign intervention. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. This is Yerado Krikorian with the news in English. Foreign and expatriate ministries strongly condemned today storming of Al-Aqsa Mosque by racial Zionist groups and organizations and extremists at the Israeli government and the Knesset. In a statement, the ministry warned that the repercussions of the Israeli repeated aggressions against Al-Aqsa Mosque will have catastrophic repercussions in the region. The ministry called for curbing the Israeli authorities' systematic practices and terrorist policy against the Islamic holy places at the occupied Palestinian territories. It reiterated the Syrian leadership and people's support to the Palestinian people in their heroic confrontation of all the Zionist and Western conspiracies targeting the existence of the Palestinian people and their inalienable rights to the return and self-determination. The Israeli settlers' gangs broke into Al-Aqsa Mosque for the second executive day under the coverage of the Israeli occupation forces which attacked the Palestinian women and prevented them from entering the mosque. A delegation of the Syrian community in France, Switzerland and Belgium reached the border crossing of Jdeidet Yabus in Damascus countryside to participate in the presidential elections set to be held tomorrow. Members of the delegation asserted that they have come to Syria after the French and Belgian governments prevented them from exercising their democratic right to vote in the elections, insisting to participate in the presidential elections and also to stand in support of the Syrian Arab army. Members of the delegation spoke spoke about the difficulties that encountered them in the airport, including cancelling their plane tickets and their flights without giving reasons and also being exposed to harassment after knowing the aim of their trip, which is participating in the presidential elections. <laughs> The Syrian-American Forum organized a rally in front of the UN headquarters in New York to express support for the Syrian people's right to express themselves and vote in the presidential elections. The Syrian community members chose to gather in front of the UN headquarters to tell the whole world that the Syrians can plan their country's future without foreign custody or dictations. The Forum's New Jersey branch member, Suhail Saba, said, that more than 550 Syrians participated in the event, which was organized with the help of the Syrian Architecture Club and global anti-war and anti-terrorism organizations. Syria's permanent representative to the UN, Dr. Bashar al-Jafari, met members of the Syrian community who participated in the rally in the headquarters of the Syrian mission to the UN. During the meeting, al-Jafari said that the Syrians' patriotism astounded the world and that what happened in Beirut, Amman and in 43 Syrian embassies around the world surprised Syria's enemies as thousands of Syrians headed to their country's embassies even in countries hostile to Syria. He stressed that the next stage will rely on national unity to rebuild Syria and preserve its sovereignty. The Interior Ministry rejected as utterly untrue all the rumors circulated by some of the biased or skeptic persons 
over piercing the voters' ID cards or those about voting online in case some voters were unable to come personally to the polling centers or even the rumors about cutting the roads between the Syrian cities and the rural areas on the day of the elections, indicating that these rumors are aimed at affecting the democratic atmosphere of the presidential elections that will be held tomorrow. In a statement, the Interior Ministry said that no sign will be put on the identity card or the passport of anyone who wants to exercise his right of voting. Also, voters have to come personally to the polling stations to cast their ballots, pointing out that the ministry will take all necessary measures to facilitate the entry and exit of the people to and from the cities. A Russian delegation comprising parliamentarians and members of the Russian Central Elections Commission arrived in Damascus to monitor as observers the presidential elections, elections scheduled to be held tomorrow. The delegation includes two Russian State Duma members, four members of the Council of Federal Union, in addition to two members of Russian Central Elections Commission. Minister of Information, Mr. Amran Zorbi, has said that the presidential elections scheduled tomorrow is a real opportunity for all Syrians to express their free will and personal opinion in electing the favorite candidate with transparency. As Zorbi further said that the vast majority of the Syrian people have the conviction of the importance of taking part in the elections based on the fact that the Syrians are eager to see security and stability be restored. He concluded by saying Syria witnessed for the first witnesses for the first time plurality, in the sense that three candidates will run for the presidency, adding that no one has the right to ask the electorates to elect this or that runner, which reflects that the will of the electorates are respected. Welcome back. Units of the Syrian Arab Army have killed all members of an armed terrorist group that took a Thora town located south of Al-Kiswa town near the old road in Dara province as a headquarter to cut off roads and attack the civilians in that area. In Aleppo countryside, Syrian Arab Army units have killed or injured a big number of the terrorists. Most of them are non-Syrians and destroyed their vehicles, arms and ammunition in the surrounding area of Jabal al-Arba'in, Bin Nish, Al-Konserwa, Der Symbol and Sarmin. Other Syrian Arab Army units targeted dens and gatherings used by the terrorists in a Dose village and destroyed four vehicles equipped with machine guns and killed 17 terrorists. Most of them are members of the so-called Dawood Brigade and and Al Muhajirin Battalion. In Homs, the Syrian Arab Army foiled an infiltration attempt from Talbisa towards Jaburin village, killing several terrorists and injuring others. Syrian Arab Army units also targeted terrorist gatherings in Sheikh Ibrahim Al Hakim in Arrastan, in Al Salihin village in the eastern part of Homs countryside, and Um Sharshouh village in Talbisa, killing many of them. Russian Foreign Minister Sergei Lavrov has said that the humanitarian issue in Syria should not be politicized and exploited to demand foreign intervention in the country. In a press conference held in Moscow, foreign intervention in the country. In a press conference held in Moscow, Lavrov said that the Security Council ought to call upon Kiev not to hinder the civilians' exit from areas of confrontations and to permit access of aid. He pointed out that the Western media disregard the latest developments south of the Ukraine by mentioning nothing about bombarding residential neighborhoods in that part of the country. 
Finally, the heads of national security and foreign policy commissions of the parliaments of the 30 states' friends to Syria who met in Tehran emphasized in the final communique that the Syrian people alone have the right to determine their own future away from any foreign intervention. The communique also stressed that the presidential elections should be held on its scheduled time, pointing out that the political solution is the only way out of the crisis in Syria. The communique added that persisting on sending weapons and financial support to the terrorists in Syria contradicts with the peaceful efforts to resolve the crisis there. The communique also emphasized the need to support the national reconciliation and to condemn the crimes of the terrorists in Syria who are backed by some foreign countries urging for a collective cooperation to help put an end to terrorism in Syria. The statement concluded that at the invitation of the Speaker of the People's Assembly in Syria, Mohammed Jihad al-Laham, and the Supreme Judicial Commission for Elections of the Speakers of Parliament of Friendly Countries, several delegations will be sent to Syria to attend the presidential elections. With this, we end our news for today. Thank you for watching. For more details about Syria and the region and to view this bulletin again, you can always visit our website in English, syriaonline.sy. Now to latest business and market news with Vani Genjan, but after a short break.